In this video, I spend 100 days building the ultimate farm from scratch in Hardcore Minecraft. I've added a couple of mods like Croptopia, which adds a lot more crops and food to the game, cooking for blockheads, which gives us kitchen-related blocks to cook with, farming for blockheads, which gives us a market to buy seeds from, geophilic, which improves vanilla biomes in subtle ways. We've got a whole heap of decorational and industrial mods and serene seasons, which adds seasons to the game, which also affects our crops. And we've got a lot of work to do, so let's get straight into day one. Spawning in, I found myself in a nice lush forest, and pretty quickly I found something new. It was a tree that had fruit in the leaves. I tried destroying a leaf, which yielded lemons. I figured out you can also just right-click them too, which would allow the tree to regrow more for us in the future. After harvesting nine in total, I checked the nutritional values, which was thanks to the apple skin mod, and that showed they only heal half a hunger bar, which kinda stinks. I then made my way over to a fallen tree and collected my first pieces of wood. I then crafted up a wooden pick, started a little mine, and gathered some cobblestone. I ended up finding some coal too, which was absolutely perfect. I quickly used those to craft some torches so we could actually see. I returned to the surface, crafted up some stone tools, and headed down to continue mining the coal, and ended up reaching into a giant ravine. I started crying over the lack of iron and said ravine, but after some continued searching, I found a big thick patch of it, which relieved me greatly. I carefully made my way down and mined up all of it, because I was extremely vulnerable right now, and wanted to upgrade my tools and armor very badly. Upon mining it all up, I soon encountered my first skelly, and took him down only taking one hit, but of course receiving zero bones. I ate a couple lemons, skin and all, which I'm sure was extremely delicious, and pushed on. I discovered a patch of dripstone and mined a bunch of it as it may come in handy if we need lava later on. I then decided it was time to get out and find an area to settle down at, and after reaching the surface, I breached out into a massive plains area, which looked absolutely perfect. After a quick lay of the land, I spotted what appeared to be an apple tree, and upon harvesting the fruit, it turns out I was right. Honestly, why isn't it like this in game? already. After harvesting a bunch of apples from a few different trees, I spotted a small ravine nearby and had a quick look for some iron within, but it appeared bone dry in the iron department. I noticed the imminent sunset and it dawned on me. I needed a bed pronto. I didn't want to be stuck underground like in the last 100 days video, so I quickly started searching for some sheep. Thankfully, it didn't take long to find one, so I plonked down my crafting table, built a furnace, and began smelting my iron, praying for it to be done before the sun fully set and mobs would start spawning in. While the iron was smelting, I had a quick look for some more sheep nearby, but it turns out our little guy right here was a lone wanderer. I headed back to my furnace, which thankfully had two pieces, and crafted up some shears. I sheared our sheep, of course only got two wool, and then noticed some weird looking crops in the distance. Harvesting the first one gave us mustard, which I definitely was not expecting. The other one gave us some lettuce, and I kind of hoped we could use it to make burgers or something. I turned around, and thankfully our sheep friend had regrown his wool, so I sheared him again, made a bed, and drifted off to sleep. Waking up on day two, I sought to upgrade some of my tools with an iron pickaxe and sword. I also reminisced on all of the comments from the previous video telling me to make a shield, so I crafted one up and promptly never used it for the rest of this video because shields are for pussies. I packed up my sh** and began surveying the area. I headed to a high point nearby and built a dirt tower to see the entire biome a bit better. And looking around, it was pretty hilly in most areas except for right here. We'd only really need to terraform the area I was standing on, which was pretty good. So I decided on this location. I then promptly fell off the dirt pillar, losing over half my health, and pondered on my stupidity. I made my way over to the area I liked and began terraforming the nearby hill and cleared out a bunch of the grass to make way for my planned farmhouse base. This was to be the center point of the entire farm and I had some awesome ideas for how it was going to look. After the terraforming was mostly done, I'd now need a shit ton of wood, so I spent the rest of day two and into day three getting as much as I could from the nearby forest. I ended up finding a bunch of different crops while chopping trees including blackberries, cauliflower, cantaloupe, which we call rock melon here in good old Australia, and some celery too. I started feeling slightly overwhelmed with all the crops, but I also had plans for a massive farm, so hopefully we could get them all planted. Just as a quick side note, I thought I'd mention I've never actually played with any of the mods I'm using in this video, so it was going to be a bit of a learning experience, okay? Now, at this point, I'd actually changed my mind on the block I wanted to use for the base of my farmhouse, and to find that block, I needed to start a mine, so I did exactly that. After a short amount of digging, I found the block, diorite. Now, I know what you're thinking, diorite looks like bird poo, but trust me, it's going to look awesome in this base, okay? I'd also dug into a cave, so I spent some time time searching for more iron and ended up finding a pretty decent amount. I also had a bit of an altercation with a skeleton that also dropped no bones and continued mining iron. Upon returning to my mine, I noticed it was now night, so I slept to day four. 
I breached to the surface, slaughtered a nearby pesky creeper that I knew would try blow me up later, and began setting up a smelting area for all the iron I'd collected. At this point I'd completely ran out of food, so I headed to the nearby forest in search of more apples or lemons, but ended up actually finding some persimmons that I devoured. I also thankfully found some cows which provided me with some juicy steaks to cook up later. I also stumbled onto some more crops, with the first being a tomatillo. What the f***? Okay, after looking it up, a tomatillo is an actual thing. What the hell? And right beside it was just a regular ass tomato. Oh, and I found some blueberries as well. Heading further up the forest, I found another couple of cows that I mercilessly killed because I was hungry. I'd also found another new crop, corn. I started getting some awesome ideas to build a massive cornfield at this point, so stay tuned. I returned home, began cooking up all the steaks, and crafted up some buckets for water for our farms. On my way to get said water, I encountered a witch that decided on poisoning me. I returned home to like a hundred skeletons in my area, so I ran off and slept elsewhere. Awakening on day 5, I encountered the same witch from earlier that poisoned me again. I killed her and then noticed all of the burning skeletons and realized I could easily get some bones here, I just needed to remember where they would all die. I collected a couple, and at this point I was still poisoned for another 15 seconds at that, which pissed me off greatly. I continued collecting the bones, getting a decent amount. With all the smelted iron, I crafted up a chest plate and upgraded my final tool, the axe. I admired my new drip while heading to the forest to begin the great harvest. I ended up getting a decent amount, but still needed to get more diorite, so I headed back to the mine once again to continue digging. After clearing out the entire deposit, I noticed it was night outside and slept underground into day 6. Upon returning to the surface, I started melting up some stone and while crafting some polished diorite, this happened. Wow, that was a close one. Here's my live reaction. At this point, a wandering trader had also spawned in, so I checked his trades, which were of course garbage, so I killed him and his stupid alpacas. Now it was finally time to start building my farmhouse. I laid out the pillars with the back using stone bricks and the front using diorite. I connected all the diorite pillars together with some stairs, leaving a gap for the entrance. This front area was to be my porch, and I decided on using some fences from the McCaws Fences mod, which looked absolutely perfect. At this point, it was day 7, and I wanted to try find some different wood to use, but after an extensive search of the nearby area, there was only oak for miles. Heading back home, I did find another herd of cows that I slaughtered for more food. Returning home, the base was looking good, coming along nicely, but I definitely needed more stone, so back down to the mine it was. I spent the rest of day 7 and into day 8 down in the mine gathering as much stone as I could as we needed a decent amount for the farmhouse. While the cobblestone was smelting, I continued building our base, starting with the porch. After adding in the floor, I raised up the front pillars of the base and started adding in the roof for the porch, consisting of a diorite trim and oak wood for the the rest. With the porch fully completed, I moved on to adding in the second floor pillars which I decided on changing to diorite. I then added stairs connecting these pillars here along with some vertical slabs to cover the gaps. Yes, you heard me right, vertical slabs. Now at this point I actually had to go download a mod to allow me to switch crafting recipes so I could actually make oak vertical slabs which I planned on using for our first floor walls. Just before I started building, I noticed one of these guys. So while I waited for him to piss off, I had a look at what we could use for a window and decided on oak barn trap doors. These needed glass panes. So I headed off to the nearby pond in hopes of it having some sand. Thankfully it did have a big patch of sand, so I worked on digging out a bunch of it. Returning home, I began smelting it all up and quickly headed back to the mine to get some more coal and diorite. With the glass now fully smelted, I used it to make some glass panes and then our window blocks, which I hoped would look good because I've never actually used them before. Next I wanted to make some stripped oak vertical slabs to use as texturing in our walls, so I placed a bunch of it down, stripped it, and then figured out you can't actually graft them. Disappointed, I had a sleep on my porch steps to awaken on day 10 with plans to finally continue construction on my base. Hopefully we'd actually get it done before the goddamn video ends, man. Using our oak vertical slabs, I placed some down on our front walls, which felt and looked very cursed, but honestly they work really well to add depth to the walls without actually losing any space on the inside, which was great. I placed in our trapdoor window, which was basically just a glass pane with a wood frame, and then added some pillars along the top of the wall to add some more detail. Next up I added our door frame right in the middle and then slapped our door in, which was looking a little bit bland at the moment, but don't worry, we'd figure that out soon. To remedy the walls looking slightly bland, I perused through the modded blocks and found these, which could look good, so I crafted some up. To go along with them, there were corner variants as well, which I thought I'd try out. Heading back to the base, I placed in the corner ones, which looked freaking awesome, and then added the straight ones, which I didn't like too much. I'd soon try out another block here. Happy with the corner ones, I added them under every pillar, and then tried out fences below them, which fit in perfectly. 
As for in between the tops of the pillars, I just opted for the good old fence and fence gate design and added this to every pillar section. I then continued adding in the rest of the front walls using the same window design for each section. I then made my way over to the side walls and began working away. I first connected up all our oak pillars along the top similar to how we did with the front. I also added our vertical slab walls at this point too. And finishing up the first floor, I added those same details to the pillar areas. Moving up to the second floor, I decided on using stone for the walls and also found out those corner details came in a diorite variant too. I also found some awesome looking fences to add between the pillars. I then spent basically half a Minecraft day thinking of what blocks to use with the roof and decided on a stone trim with oak for the rest. I don't know why that took me so long. I also added a dormer to the front middle area of the roof which fit in perfectly. And there we have it. Now on day 13, our farmhouse base exterior was fully completed and actually looking way better than I expected. Let me know what you think in the comments. And well, now it was time to tackle the interior that I had big plans for. We of course needed a floor first and I decided on an oak slab trim with stone filling out the rest. With the floor done, I continued with the ceiling and opted to have a gap in the middle to separate the second floor a bit and keep it interesting. I then played around with a few different ways of how we'd actually get to these two floors and just ended up settling on two separate ladders which hopefully wouldn't get too annoying. I decided on adding a bit of a safety railing to these floors using another modded fence variant which just, man, they just look so good. Now before I started building the interior I wanted to make a backpack which needed some iron. I actually had plenty and began melting but realized I'd run out of coal. So I went for a quick trip down to the mine and totally didn't spend the entire day down here. I found this beautiful dripstone cave that was unfortunately filled to the brim with mobs so I turned around and just continued mining over here instead. Heading back it was of course night time again so I slept underground into day 15 and made my way back to the surface. I began smelting all the iron I'd mined and while I waited I worked on getting the wool I'd also need to create the backpack and after some searching I found our little guy from earlier and sheared him. Returning home with everything we needed, I crafted up the backpack and wow, that is a lot of space which will definitely come in handy. With a lot more iron now smelted, I used it to craft the rest of the armor pieces I was missing along with a new iron pick. And there we have it, full iron on day 15. Uh, not that impressive really. Next up, I wanted to start crafting all the random interior blocks and decorations I wanted and they all needed a lot of wood, so I began chopping down this little tree farm I made earlier. Onto the first block I wanted, an oven. The only thing we didn't have was black stained glass which was definitely annoying. So I made my way back over to the pond in hopes of it containing squid and thankfully the pond provided once again. I swiftly dispatched a bunch of them, grabbed their ink sacks and returned home. I slept out in the bush before mobs could start spawning and awoke on day 16. It was definitely taking way longer than expected to finish this stupid house and it was starting to piss me off man. Returning home I crafted up the oven and began trying to figure out how to craft these stupid compact barrels and chests which I thought would just make life a little easier out here on the farm. That didn't exist yet. I ended up spending most of the day trying to craft these stupid bastards up and at the end of it all I had this cool barrel to show for it. At this point I'd also ran out of iron because those barrel things needed a lot of it. So I found myself back down in the mine and eventually made my way down to that awesome looking dripstone cave. I got into a bit of a brawl with some zombies and a skeleton but ended up taking them down. Perusing through the cave I found more iron, a lot more stupid annoying mobs and eventually a bunch of diamonds. Well that's what I'd hoped. Uh, it turned out it was only one piece, of course. I almost missed this next patch of diamonds which thankfully had a bit more in it too. I continued my exploration and eventually found myself in the zombie kindergarten. These feisty little mongrels almost killed me until I built their greatest weakness, a two block high dirt pillar. At this point I'd ran out of food and started eyeing off some rotten flesh until I realized they actually had some glowing calamari from some glow squid I caught earlier. I set up a quick little cookout, fried up the calamari and that satiated uh, not a lot of my hunger. Now on day 18 down in the mines I spotted my third patch of diamonds, finally which only had one once again. Soon after I found another patch which thankfully had at least two in it. I'd returned to the dripstone cave and found more diamonds except it was just one again and at this point I was very low on food and getting shot at by skeletons so it was time to leave. Returning home I began the great smelting of all the iron I'd collected and admired my measly eight diamonds. That's quite a eh? I also decided it was finally time to build our first farm of this farm specific 100 days video. I'm sorry this took so long. This first farm was to be basically a decorative one, but we'd use it in the meantime to grow wheat for expanding our soon to exist cow population. I planned on using bone meal to get some wheat real quick and it just simply wasn't working. I was very confused. I thought that maybe it was related to the seasons mod I implemented. So I searched up the calendar and noticed it was spring. Surely wheat could grow in spring, right? I then just 
decided on spamming bone meal, which actually grew it slightly, and then realized that maybe wheat just can't grow in spring. So I searched it up, and sure enough, the fertile seasons were summer and autumn. What a bummer. I then just used the rest of my bone meal on this one wheat, and thankfully it grew. We could use this piece to lure some cows and eventually start our cow farm. On a rainy day 18, I slept outside for some reason. I'd literally just spent hours building our farmhouse. And waking up on day 19, I had a nice healthy four apples for breakfast and spent the entire day crafting the rest of the random shit I wanted in my house. Now on day 20, it was finally time to start on our house interior. I'd crafted all the crap we needed, so let's get started. I started off with our bedroom right in between the two ladders. I placed in the fancy bed I crafted and changed the sheets and pillows to red. I then placed in our two bedside tables that also had storage inside them too, and then placed two torches on each of those. It was looking a little bare above the bed, so I added a quick little leaf thing, and that's the bedroom done. Heading over to the left side wall, I started on our storage area. I filled the top up with these barrels that held a lot of one item, which was pretty handy. I added a little shelf below these and filled the bottom up with more barrels and some compact chests that hold the same amount as double chests. I started our kitchen on the right side wall, firstly placing in our oven. I added a decorative range hood above this and added a few pipes above that I might eventually add a chimney to. I had a look inside the oven, which was very confusing, and just decided to continue building instead of figuring that shit out. I grabbed out the kitchen table and chairs I'd made and started figuring out where to place them. I tried a few different designs and locations until I settled on this one that was nice and out of the way and in the corner. Our kitchen was coming along nicely except for beside the oven. So I placed in some of the spare item drums I'd made which would be a nice storage for coal and things to be smelted. Next up I headed outside and literally slept out here. Literally, I have, I have no idea what the f*** I'm doing. I just made a nice fancy bed inside. What am I doing man? I came back inside on a bright and sunny day 21 and placed in a bunch of furnaces below those item drums along with this spare barrel thing I made accidentally. I started figuring out my storage area, made a few modifications and then admired my base interior so far. It was coming along quite nicely. I realized I'd completely forgotten about crafting, so I just added a few benches into the ground below the storage, which I thought worked well and looked intentional, at least. I then added some cushions to our kitchen chairs, had a quick little sit to test out the comfort, and got off my ass to continue building. I thought the floor was quite bare, so I started crafting up some nice red carpets, added them beside my bed, and quickly ran out. Cutting the boring crap of me gathering wool and flowers, I returned home, finished off the bedroom, and added a nice rug near the storage. I then crafted up my first diamond tools with a pickaxe, shovel, and an axe, until running out of diamonds. I ate some chicken and admired my sparkly new tools in my epic new house. I finished off day 21 cutting down some trees while thinking about which project I wanted to start next. I have no idea what happened on day 22. I have no footage of it, but... Now, on day 23, it was finally time to start planning out our farm, starting with the plot sizes. I wanted our farm to basically be a giant grid, and I first needed to figure out the sizes of each of those plots. After marking everything out, I wrote down our plot size on a sign so I wouldn't forget it, and added a second sign for something you guys shouldn't forget to do as well. I'm so sorry about that one. <laughs> now, it was finally time to start adding in our pathways that would separate each plot. So, I got to work on our first plot pathways, which obviously contained my farmhouse. I had to do quite a bit of terraforming, and I I also had a pretty smart idea of using a stone shovel for marking out the paths to save the durability of my diamond shovel. Just thought I'd um, let you guys know. I finished up the paths at the end of day 23 and hit the sack. Starting bright and early on day 24, I sought to expand the wheat farms in front of my house. I worked on tilling all of the land, leaving a one block gap from the pathway, and planted the rest of the wheat seeds I had to my name. Now, I wanted to know when these bad boys would actually start growing, so I checked the calendar, which said it was actually the last day of spring, meaning tomorrow these guys should all start growing a lot faster, which was great. We could finally start a cow farm because I was sick of living off apples. For the rest of day 24, 25, and into 26, I worked on adding a second plot to our farm to start growing other crops. And and once I'd finished terraforming, I also started a second plot for which I had big plans. I admired my new farmland on day 26, but was also extremely low on food. However, I had a plan. With wheat growing faster in summer and autumn, I checked the calendar, which showed it was now summer, thankfully. We could now start going full speed on wheat and stocking up on feed for our animals we didn't have yet. So it's time to get that sorted out, and I started off by getting a little temporary pen built behind my farmhouse. I just built a quick and dirty one using boring old vanilla fences as I wanted to get this cow pop population established ASAP. With the pen completed, I began randing- Oh my god. With the pen done, I began- <laughs> With the pen done, I began rounding up the local cow herd and brought them- Man. Holy sh**. You guys know what I'm trying to say. I, I give up trying to say this goddamn line, man. When it came to the animal farms, I had a bit of a secret weapon, and that was a little item called a feeding trough. 
This would allow me to put food in the trough and the animals to breed automatically, but the recipe needed a golden carrot and I had no carrots. But I had another secret plan and that was to build a market. We'd be able to trade for carrots instead of needing to find them, which would make a life a lot easier. I went searching for a sheep to get some wool we'd need, got a bit sidetracked and killed a lot of wild pigs until finding a sheep that I dyed red and sheared, and then continued killing a lot more animals. I got jumped by a skeleton that I exterminated, and upon reaching my doorstep, a baby zombie emerged from my farm and almost put me down. I called it a night and headed for bed. In the morning, I started cooking up all the pork I'd harvested the previous day, along with getting a light bit of farming done. I bred my cows, ate some pork to heal to full, and worked on crafting up the market I'd needed to get carrots. I placed down the market, watched a villager fall from the heavens to serve me, and upon taking a look at his trades, there were no carrots. Deeply upset, I knocked him around a couple times and retreated to my farm while crying. And so, for the rest of day 27, I planned to go on a bit of an adventure to find some carrots. I first had a quick look around my plains area and spotted no villagers, so I continued on. Shortly into my adventure, I found some sugarcane that I harvested, along with some clay that I dug up for some reason. I also found a few cows that I killed for their precious meat and leather. I then crafted up a boat to traverse this massive ocean in hopes of finding a beachside village, but quickly ended up finding a ruined portal and made my way over to that. Arriving at the portal, I searched the chest to find a whole lot of garbage. I made my way to the treetops of this little island to scout around and found no villagers. With it now turning to night, I decided to cut my losses and head back home instead of wasting time trying to find this stupid carrot. On the way home, I got slightly distracted with a nearby cave and mined some iron and coal. Returning home, I killed a bunch more cows and sorted out all of my chests. I don't know why I recorded this. I then decided to start my first proper farms in the plot I'd created days prior and began tilling a bunch of land for our crops to be planted on. The first crop I decided on planting was some lettuce with a grand total of four seeds planted. I decided on making the next layer our wheat farm, so I worked on getting a bunch of seeds planted along with tilling more land. I slept to day 29 and repeated basically the same thing in the morning. I then worked on the bottom tier of the farmland, tilling a bunch of land and planted my one blueberry seed. Onto the second from the top area, I planted my one tomato seed and also tilled a bunch of the land. Before I forgot which seeds were which, I decided on adding some signs in front of each farm so I could see which was which at a glance. Just another display of my 200 farming IQ. I admired the new farms and decided on getting to work on the second plot while those crops were growing. This plot was going to contain an absolutely massive animal barn, so I started on clearing out all of the grass and shrubbery that was going to be in the way. I then continued adding in the pathway that had surround the entire plot, along with getting the middle portion of the land nice and flat for the absolutely massive barn I wanted to build here. With the plot all nicely terraformed, it was time to get some more diorite because I was all out. I made my way back down the mine and spent the rest of day 30 mining. I emerged on day 31, smelted up a bunch of cobblestone, and started crafting crafting some polished diorite until I remembered that stone cutters are a thing, so I went and made one. I noticed there were a bunch of different diorite blocks we could use, but just opted for good old polished diorite. It was now night, so I hit the hay and awoke on day 32 and finally got started building the barn, first getting the pillars established. Happy with the front pillars, I moved on to the side ones, did a little bit more excavating for the back pillars, and once they were all added, I was very happy with the proportions. Now it was time to get the rest of the actual barn built, and I first started with the roof trim, using polished andesite for this too. I also went for an interesting roof shape that I think would work well and filled it all in with stone. I did think of adding some dormers to the roof, but I felt it would make it look more like a warehouse, so I left it plain. For the front wall design, I used some fences from the McCaws fence mod along with some stone vertical slabs. When it came to the back and side wall designs, I ended up settling on a single layer of stone vertical slabs, followed by some upside down stone stairs and finally some more of those modded fences. On the sides, I also alternated that design with filled in walls. When it came to the inside, I went for a layout that had housed four separate species with plenty of room for cows on the left. I lit it all up, added in a pathway along with some storage and decorations, and finally brought in all of the cows from my temporary farm. I did also want to get a sheep population established, so I rounded up the local sheep and into their pen back at the new barn. I went and got some shears, sheared all our sheep, and thought this barrel would be a cool spot for the shears to go with our wheat storage on the opposite side. And there we have it, the barn build was fully completed. Back at the farmhouse, a lot of our wheat was grown, so I worked on harvesting as much as I could. Our farms in the other plot also had a lot of crops grown, so I just spent a bunch of time harvesting everything, getting more seeds planted and doing some rearranging, putting corn on the bottom tier and blueberries up at the top. And there's the farm now, obviously still not done but looking good. I went to bed and on day 38 I decided to check out a little cave I found while luring the sheep down to the barn and started mining out some coal. I had a very close encounter with a creeper but thankfully I had some distance on him. Now taking a look at my tools, they're almost all broken and I had only 
one diamond left, so I decided to spend the next day or two mining. I returned to the dripstone caves and just had a feeling I was being followed, and of course it was a creeper. My sword broke mid-battle, but luckily I was prepared as I had a backup ready to go. During my expedition, I found lots of iron and gold, and also this massive lava lake along with some diamonds in the distance. Upon arriving at the clearing, I spotted even more diamonds and started making my way down. I then encountered a zombie and a bunch of skellies I tried to run past, which of course didn't work. I ended up coming very close to death, but my 200 IQ and quick wit saved me as I hid behind a big rock. After that close call, I made my way up and mined some diamonds, and also ended up spotting another two patches and made my way down to go mine them, encountering a few creepers on the way. I made my way over to the other diamonds and uncovered yet another patch, so I started mining, encountered even more zombies that I slayed, and mined up the rest of the diamonds with a grand total of 12 in my inventory. I eventually found my way back to the lava lake and uncovered even more diamonds I'd missed earlier, so I mined them up, gaining an additional two. I encountered another two zombie children, one equipped with an iron shovel that almost took me out, but like Luckily I escaped, ate some food to heal, and then put him down. Now on day 40, I decided it was time to get out. Kind of disappointed I'd only found 14 diamonds, but it was better than nothing at least. After returning home, I sorted out all the crap from the mining trip, cooked up some food, and then remembered I wanted to make an enchanting table which needed four obsidian. Time to go back to the goddamn mine. I ended up finding some more diamonds, and after reaching the lava lake, I mined up the obsidian I needed. Emerging out of the mine, a rude skeleton shot me in the head. He also had an enchanted bow, so I just made a run for the door. I ate some food to heal up and then smoked his ass. I checked for witnesses, then headed back inside and went to bed. Waking up on day 41, I had some steak for breakfast and then started looking for a spot to start my sugarcane farm. We'd need a lot for all the bookshelves for enchanting and I wanted to get it started ASAP. I decided on the plot to the right of my house and got it all set up, planting the 12 I had. I then noticed a lot of the crops in front of my house were grown, so I worked on expanding those farms as much as I could for majority of the day. Next, it was time for an adventure to find more sugarcane and I first found this cute little island that I just had to rest at. I set sail in the morning, found some more sugarcane, and also a skeleton doing this. Continuing on, I had a little portage and followed the river until I breached out into the ocean, spotting heaps of sugarcane everywhere. I ended up finding a shipwreck that had mostly garbage, except the last chest that had some emeralds and a diamond. I'd also found a jungle on an island, and I desperately wanted the bamboo for scaffolding, so I harvested a bunch of it. I ended up finding heaps more sugarcane on my adventures, did some more island camping, found some new crops, got slightly lost as I didn't mark down my base coordinates, slaughtered some cows out of anger of not being able to find my base, and then spotted it just over a hill. Returning home with heaps of sugarcane, I started terraforming the plot of land that was beside my house that had contained the farm. I planned on making half of this plot for sugarcane and the other half would have strips of other farms which we'd get to eventually. With the plot fully terraformed, I finished up the surrounding pathways and expanded the farm as much as I could. I then spent some time figuring out the farms that would go beside the sugarcanes, eventually setting on planting cauliflower, celery and bell peppers in rows of three. Now at this point I'd noticed I had a carrot in my inventory. Looking back while editing, I tracked it down to this zombie drop it six days ago. It legit took me that long to notice it was in my inventory. I then ended up spending the rest of day 45 working on these farms. I continued expanding our celery and bell peppers along with harvesting and expanding the sugarcane farm until finally going to bed. On the morning of day 46, I was rudely attacked by a flaming zombie and then decided on evicting the market villager as I now had everything I wanted anyway, meaning adding this mod was a complete waste of time. I then started on making books along with our enchanting table, deciding that the second floor would be the best spot to add it in. Now, it kind of felt felt like cheating just checking the calendar and the JEI menu, so I figured it was time to craft one so I didn't feel bad. Once it was crafted, I was disappointed to see that you still needed to hover over it in the inventory to see the day of the season, so I just ended up mounting it on my wall and just continued using the JEI menu to check the days. I started smelting up some iron and decided on trying out the oven I made back on like day 15 to cook up the rest of my steak. And upon adding in the meat and watching it all get cooked at once, I wondered why I didn't try this sooner. It was now time to get our next plot of land established, with this one containing two farms, one for carrots and the other for wheat. I started adding in the pathways and also decided on leaving this one largely untouched in terms of terraforming as the shape was really nice already. I added a path to split the two farms and began adding in all the water along with tilling the land and planting all the crops I could. Now, unfortunately it wasn't the season for carrots, meaning I'd need to bone mill it if I wanted to get more for the animal troughs to set up automatic animal breeding, but we'll get to that eventually. With those new crop farms growing away, I noticed my sugarcanes had grown in 
in nicely, so I began harvesting them in order to get enchanting set up. The farms beside these had also finished growing, so I worked on expanding those as much as I could as well. I then worked on getting as many bookshelves crafted as I could, started adding them in, misplaced one like an idiot, but we were now up to level 22 in the enchanting table. With leather now being the main issue, I headed to the barn to breed our cows and slaughter a shit ton of them. I could now make a measly four more bookshelves, headed upstairs and realized my windows were in the way, so I worked on fixing those up. I then added in the four bookshelves and noticed we were now at level 30 with my pickaxe showing fortune 3 which was amazing. However, I knew that adding more bookshelves would be beneficial in getting more enchantments, so I held off for now. I headed outside with new plans to create our next plot of land which would contain our silos. I also spotted a wandering trader in the distance that of course had some dog sh trades, so I had to teach him a lesson. I also decided on finally sorting out these chests that I'd been avoiding since the beginning and just decided on basically cramming all the random seeds and crops inside this chest on my porch. I awoke on day 50, now halfway through the 100 day challenge and excited for what the next 50 days would bring us. I continued sorting all the crap from those chests outside and finally began working on the plot of land. I figured out the dimensions and added in all the pathways along with clearing out random debris and heaps of grass. I also decided on doing minimal terraforming for this plot too, mainly because I couldn't be bothered, but I I ended up settling on two tiers of land which would situate the silos I planned on building. Now with our plot fully landscaped and looking great, it was time to start gathering materials for the silos of which I planned on using bricks and copper for. I've been playing a shitload of Stardew Valley recently and I basically want to replicate the silos from that game into Minecraft. So I headed to bed and waking up on day 51, I tended to my crops, expanding the farm as much as I could and made my way over to the river to collect some clay. I found a couple weird looking crops which ended up being broccoli and kale of which I thought would be nice to set a farm up for. Continuing to the river I found a new block which ended up being salt and I just gathered a bunch of it because you just can't go wrong with salt. I also ended up spending pretty much the rest of the day just gathering the clay I needed for the silos. Returning home with a lot of clay and not a lot of furnaces, I ended up leaving it to tomorrow's problem and headed for bed. I did think of building a super smelter but definitely didn't have enough iron so I just opted for building a bunch of furnaces and making the other side of the second floor a massive smelting room. I filled every furnace to the brim with clay and then decided on finally getting some tools enchanted while I waited for them to smelt. Lacking in leather, I made my way to the barn to begin breeding and slaughtering heaps of my cows. Returning home, I had a quick look at the modded brick blocks and decided on using a combination of the vanilla bricks and these ones to more closely match the textured pattern of the silo in Stardew Valley. I then started crafting some books, ran out of paper, and headed back to my sugarcane farm to harvest some more. I then crafted up seven bookshelves, which ended up being the perfect amount for the enchanting area. Remembering my pickaxe showed Fortune 3, I sought to enchant that first, and we ended up with an amazing set of enchantments, Breaking 3, Fortune 3, and Efficiency 4, I couldn't be more happy. I then started cooking up all the meat I collected along with gathering bricks from all the furnaces, getting back to level 30, meaning I could enchant another tool. I decided a shovel would be the next best one as I was doing a lot of terraforming and this would speed that up quite a lot. We ended up with another amazing set of enchantments with Efficiency 4, Unbreaking 3, and Fortune 3. I was so excited we'd get more clay from each block, but it turns out you only ever get 4 from each block, which kinda sucks. I then spent the rest of day 53 gathering more clay as we had nowhere near enough and upon returning home to smelt it up I completely ran out of coal. So it was time to head back to the mines which ended up being quite sh** for coal. I did mine up a lot of copper as we needed it for the roof of the silos along with finding an ungodly amount of iron and even a few diamonds. I returned home, sorted out my mining hall, disappointed in the lack of coal I needed and smelted up the rest of what I had left. This again got me up to level 30 so I crafted up a diamond sword and a new axe to enchant. I took a look at each tool and which showed a better enchantment which was definitely the axe and upon enchanting we only received efficiency which kinda sucked. I cried myself to sleep and awoke on day 54 with a master plan to sort out my coal problem. It was time to set up a lava dripstone farm which would be way quicker and easier than gathering coal. So I crafted up a bunch of buckets, made my way down to the giant lava lake and gathered as much as I could. Returning home I crafted up as many cauldrons as I could and started looking for a spot to set up the lava farm opting for down in the mine. I placed in all the cauldrons along with the point to drip stones and finally all the lava above those. Now we had an infinite source of fuel for our furnaces which would save a lot of time and hassle. While heading back to base I noticed our peppers, celery and cauliflower was ready to harvest so I spent some time expanding those farms. I then went and checked on our carrots which were actually growing. I also had a couple of bones so I converted them to bone meal and grew the carrots to get the farm established quicker. I also checked the season which showed it was now autumn meaning our carrots could now grow at full speed. I continued bone mealing and expanding making sure to keep two carrots for the feeding troughs I needed. Back home, I started crafting up everything we needed for the troughs, the golden carrots, and the hay bales. With everything ready, I crafted them up, noticed it was nighttime, and headed for bed. 
Now on day 55, I ran over to the animal barn and got our first feeder placed in and stocked it up with wheat. Straight away, our cows started automatically breeding, which was perfect. I then got our second feeder set up over at the sheeps and got rudely attacked by a skeleton that was somehow not on fire and uh, I put him down. I gathered all the XP from the breeding and realized that's the only downside. The XP will kind of go to waste if I'm not here to pick it up. But oh well, what can you do? Back home, I started smelting up a bunch of copper for the roofs of the silos and once again reached level 30. I made my way up to the enchanting table and noticed it showed looting 2, which was the exact one I wanted. Enchanting the sword, we received knockback 2, looting 2, and sharpness 3. I was kind of annoyed with the knockback as I hate that enchantment, but I was overall happy with the other enchantments. We also now had a decent stockpile of bricks, but it was still nowhere near enough, so it was time to start collecting more clay. At the end of my harvesting session, I noticed these guys going for a quick swim and just decided to head home and go to bed. On day 56, I continued smelting clay, and while that lot was going, I figured it was time to get the dimensions and positions of each silo figured out. I ended up settling on this shape here and then spent some time getting the positioning right and settled on this for the first row of three. Onto the next three, I started placing in the base of all of those up at the top portion of land and was pretty happy with the overall layout. With day 56 coming to a close, I hit the hay and once again started collecting more clay along with regretting my decision to use bricks for the silos. This was already taking way longer than I expected. Back at home, I started smelting with the lava buckets and also checked on the lava farm which was almost completely full so I filled up each of my buckets. I expanded my furnaces on the top floor and went to bed, and on the next day, I smelted more clay. I also remembered about the bamboo we collected many days prior and crafted up some scaffolding before I forgot, as it would greatly help with building these silos. Speaking of, I finally got started building said silos. This also ended up taking six days to build because I still needed to go collect more clay for bricks. I steadily raised up each silo to a height I was happy with and began adding the roofs out of copper. I also only had enough copper for one roof, so in between building, I was collecting more copper and smelting, which took forever. But one after the other, I was steadily getting them all built until they were all done. And there we have it. All the silos are completed and looking great. However, the surrounding landscape could definitely use some details. Now, as far as I know, silos are used for storing animal feed, and I felt a great detail to showcase this would be some hay bales scattered around. So I harvested every single piece of wheat on my farm. I used that wheat to craft hay bales along with various other detailing blocks like chests, barrels, and campfires. And once they were all created, I made my way outside to the silos. Beginning work on the detailing, I placed placed in our first hay bales, chest, and barrel along with a lantern, which ended up looking awesome, so I then just continued adding the similar type of detailing around every single silo, and once they were all added, it was looking way better. For the rest of day 64, I worked on expanding the carrot and wheat farms behind my farmhouse, getting the carrots almost halfway planted, and finishing off the wheat entirely, as I now had a lot of spare seeds from the harvest earlier this day. I headed for bed and awoke on day 65 with the desire to continue expanding our farm and planting as many crops as I could, starting off with the broccoli and kale I found days earlier. I had a scout around the farm and ended up settling on this spot behind the silos and to the left of the wheat and carrots. I of course started with getting the pathways established around the perimeter of this new farm along with clearing out all the grass and shrubbery that was in the way. I split the farm in half with a path and began tilling all the land. I also ended up leaving the landscape basically untouched as it was such a nice shape already and made it feel more natural. And there we have it, the kale and broccoli were all planted, just simply waiting on them to grow to fill out the rest of the farm. Immediately after this, I began eyeing off a location for my next expansion and settled on this area here. I then made my way down the mine to begin harvesting cobblestone as this next project would need a lot of it. Returning home on day 67 with almost 9 stacks, I used the stone cutter to craft some into slabs and stairs for the project. I brought the stone cutter with me as I was certain I'd need to craft more and made my way to the location to begin terraforming our fish pond. Of course, I first got the pathway situated that had outlined our plot and just got straight into designing the pond, opting for a circular shape. I was happy with it after a couple revisions and began adding in the water along with a deeper middle point and heaps of stairs and slabs to make the pond more interesting. I went and grabbed some bone meal to add some seagrass into our pond because right now it was kind of flat in the water, so I got seagrass added basically everywhere and then worked on taking some patches out so it wasn't too overgrown. The edges of the pond were looking kind of plain, so I extended this corner out to add a bit of a bucket in along with various other details. If you couldn't tell already, this was another build inspired by Stardew Valley. I continued riskily working into the night to get this project done and extended another corner of the pond. On this side, I added a big wooden pole thing along with various other details. For the final area, I added a few more random details and then scattered a couple lanterns around, along with fending off a farm invader. I headed for bed and awoke on day 69, <clears throat> with the intention of stocking our new pond with fish. I tried catching some nearby salmon with empty buckets, and after realizing what I was doing wrong, I filled the buckets up and began actually catching them. 
With eight salmon caught, I headed back to the pond and added them all in, and that's it, the pond was fully completed. Once again looking to expand further, I found the next plot I wanted to work on and began adding all the pathways in. This time around, I left the grass untouched as this was going to be a tree farm. Heading to my seed chest, I found some avocados and pears and decided on planting those. I had to make some saplings first, using oak saplings along with our desired crops. We also had a massive surplus of wheat seeds, so I used a bunch of them to get some bone meal. Heading back to the plot of land, I worked on getting the space of the saplings right along with bone mealing one and harvesting all the avocados it produced. I crafted some more avocado saplings and planted those in along with our pears. I bone mealed a pear tree and repeated the whole process, not without having a nap first. And so at the end of it all, I still didn't have all the saplings planted, but it was good enough for now. With the tree farm now mostly done, I got straight into working on the next plot, which had a bit of a bee infestation I had to take care of. I then, of course, added in the pathways that had outlined this plot, along with a decent bit of terraforming up at the top corner. Now this farm would actually contain three separate crops, cantaloupe, something, and something else I forgot the names of. So I divided the plots in three and got everything planted and tilled. And there's all three farms planted with all the seeds I had, and straight away I began chopping some wood for the next project I had planned. Returning to the farm, I noticed a snow patch, and a second one in the distance. Checking the calendar, we were now in winter, my favourite season. Surely nothing catastrophic was going to happen. <clears throat> now, this next plot was aimed at creating a nice sanctuary to hold our soon-to-exist chicken population, as I'm sure eggs were needed in a lot of recipes. With the pathway now fully added in, I found the rough middle point and marked it with a short dirt pillar. I cleared out the grass around this, along with a slight bit of terraforming to have a nice surface to build on. I then began working on the foundation of our chicken coop with stone bricks in the ground and stone brick walls situated on top of those. I built some oak pillars on top of those along with a ramp that the chickens would use to get in and out of the coop. I started construction of the main coop part, first extending the pillars up to a height I was happy with along with connecting them up at the tops. When it came to the roof design, I opted for my signature slab and stair style along with only using oak for the entire roof. Once again, another trader had spawned in which had pissed me off straight away. I checked his trades, not surprised at the lack of things I actually wanted and once again, murdered them all in cold blood. After collecting their remains, I continued with the build, getting the roof entirely completed. I added some sticky addy bits to all the pillars so it wasn't so flat, and then began construction of the walls that I decided on using vertical slabs for. I added little windows in using oak trap doors and repeated this design across all the walls along with adding in a doorway. When it came to the interior, I added a slab floor in and thought some hay bales would fit perfectly as a little nesting area. And that's when disaster struck. Every single water source across all of my farms had now turned into ice, meaning every farm was slowly getting destroyed and I had a lot of them. Panicking, I emptied out some of my inventory and thought the best idea would be to add torches next to each water source. I crafted up the torches, headed outside and noticed one source that wasn't frozen as it had a slab inside preventing the ice from taking over the water. I rushed back home and crafted up more slabs. Racing against the clock, I started removing each piece of ice and placed slabs in their place. I also noticed the modded crops had started turning into dirt underneath which was a massive problem as I'd have to remove them, retill the land and replant them which was going to be a lot more work. Our sugar canes were also starting to get destroyed, so I started working on replacing the ice blocks with our waterlogged slabs. I also realized this wasn't as important as fixing the modded crops, so I quickly headed for bed and continued fixing in the morning. I made my way to the cauliflower, celery, and bell peppers and worked on fixing up their water next. After they were all sorted, I headed for the wheat and carrot farms and began repeating the process. Our kale and broccoli were among some of the worst, as most of the tilled land I prepared was now ruined, which took a long time to do. This was the same deal for our newest farms as well, and to top it all off, it started snowing, making things infinitely worse. On top of having to retill all the land, I now had to clear it of snow as well. With tears steadily streaming down my face, I watched as my farm began getting overrun with snow. But I was determined and continued working tirelessly to get everything fixed up. I used countless shovels and multiple hoes to continue clearing each farm along with retilling and replanting the crops. I was definitely worried at how much time this was going to take as I still had a lot of projects planned for my farm that I wanted to get done, and this unforeseen winter problem was steadily eating into that time. Nevertheless, getting everything fixed was an absolute priority, so everything else I wanted to do would have to wait. All in all, the entire process of removing the layer of snow, retilling the land, and replanting the crops took about three days, which actually wasn't too bad. With everything now fixed, I returned to the chicken coop I was previously working on and began adding a shelf to the interior, along with hay bales at the bottom as a nesting place for the chickens. I then added an animal feeder in here to automatically breed our chickens, along with fixing up the ceiling. We of course needed a fence to contain our chickens, so I marked 
out each corner and worked on connecting them all up, adding a gate at the front in the middle. I also decided this would be annoying, so I just added a gate into every single side. I then added some torches on the fences around the perimeter and chicken coop, along with adding some more details to the coop itself. With the coop now pretty much done, I headed out to the forest in search of some permanent residents and quickly found two that I led back home. They also quickly began breeding thanks to the animal feeder. I then remembered I'd made these pathway blocks from the Macaws Paths mod, so I added them into every gate and along the chicken coop. All of our avocado and pear trees had now grown, so I spent a bunch of time harvesting each of those along with crafting up more saplings to get the rest planted in. Our cantaloupes, mustard, and soybeans had all also grown in nicely, so I spent the rest of day 77 harvesting and replanting all of those. Now on day 78, I wanted to continue expanding with a potato farm, but I of course had no potatoes, so I worked on crafting up another market stall to trade with. I looked for a spot to place it in, deciding on next to the fish pond, and upon trading, they had no potatoes, so I smashed emerald muncher in the head. I then just decided on grabbing some beetroot seeds instead. While looking for a spot to start our new beetroot farm, I noticed our broccoli and kale had a bunch of grown crops, so I did a bit of harvesting and replanting. I found a spot just above our wheat and carrots to start the beetroot farm. The only thing is we had a massive mountain here, so I made this into a sort of half plot which I had hoped would look cool. On a snowy day 79, I opted to spend most of the day inside and I started the day off strong with killing heaps of innocent cows because I was low on food. Cooking the steak up in the oven reminded me that right now our smoke was technically just getting dispersed on the second floor here. To remedy that, I continued the pipe up and out of the house into the chimney I promised I'd finish earlier in this video. Heading for bed, I awoke on a beautiful day 80, but still had more I wanted to do to our house's interior, with some items needing terracotta. So to get that, I headed back to the river, dug up some clay, and returned home to smelt it up. Now, to save you all the boring crap, I ended up placing a bunch of plates, vases, and also some leaves on top of some vases, which looked awesome, but were technically floating. I also ended up removing the leaf decoration above my bed, replacing it with a salmon trophy instead, along with some more potted plants beside my bed. I found the perfect spot for the calendar above the front door and admired my new interior, so far. I also found a block called a chicken nest, so I crafted some up and replaced the hay bales I placed in the coop with those, and the cool thing is they automatically collected eggs from the nearby chickens. I also noticed our cantaloupe, mustard, and soybeans had grown again, so I spent some time farming those up. On day 81, I did the same thing for our kale, until noticing these blokes heading down the mountain, so I just avoided them by heading inside to try out some cooking. I first had to craft up the Croptopia book, and upon looking inside, there was a lot of food to try. I ended up spending majority of the day just going through food recipes, finding something I liked, and working on getting all the ingredients for it. I harvested milk, made some cheese, and at the end of it all, I had some cheeseburgers. I poked my head out and noticed the blokes had vanished, so I continued doing what I was going to do, expand yet again with some more crops. This one would be another sort of half plot once again due to the nearby mountain I didn't feel like flattening. I'd accumulated a lot of berry seeds, so I ended up planting three different crops here with grapes, blackberries, and blueberries. Looking back, I probably should have grouped more similar crops like this together, but oh well. Now on day 85, yes it took 4 days to make that farm due to the pillages that kept spawning in, I ended up just continuing expanding all of our farms because it was getting close to the end and I didn't want any empty farmland anywhere. I hit the hay and in the morning started on creating 3 more farms, starting with an oak tree slash wood farm. This one would take up 2 plots, creating a rectangular shape to fit in heaps of trees. I left the landscape basically untouched and finally planted in the rest of the saplings I had left. Onto the next farm beside the cantaloupe mustard and soybeans was going to be the cornfield. After adding the paths along with clearing the snow and grass, I began adding in the water, tilling the land, and worked on filling up the entire plot with corn. The following farm was right beside the cornfield we just planted, and this one needed a decent bit of terraforming, which we made light work of thanks to our enchanted shovel. This plot would also house three crops, oats, tomatoes, and tomatillos. So I just worked on tilling all of the land along with planting all the seeds I had for those crops. Now on day 90, our area was actually looking amazing. It was actually looking like a proper farm which just warmed my heart and made me happy. But we did still have quite a lot of work to do, so I first started off by chopping down all the trees in my new oak tree farm. I waited for all the leaves to clear clear and drop saplings so that we could replant, and thankfully I ended up getting the entire field planted. I then went around to every farm and continued harvesting and expanding, along with realizing that a lot of these farms might not get fully planted without some help from our good old friend, Bone Meal. Equipped with our looting 2 sword, I made my way down the mine in search of our good old friends, the skeletons. It was an absolute massacre. Tens of skeletons were slain by my hand, and I finally decided to leave after most of my armor was destroyed. I did end up with a decent haul of 33 bones though. 
Returning home, I replaced my destroyed armor pieces and noticed I'd gotten a potato from one of the zombies I'd killed. Knowing that our beetroot farm needed a lot of help, due to it only growing in autumn, I planted our spuds at the opposite end to make a dual farm. I then spent a bunch of time going around to each farm that needed help and bone milled as much as I could, replanting those crops to help them grow in quicker. I ended up at my chicken coop and noticed our chicken population had expanded rapidly. Every single nest was also full of eggs and refilling before my very eyes. With it now snowing, I opted to stay warm and cozy inside and had another peruse at the Croptopia cookbook, eventually finding wine. This only needed grapes, which we were actually growing, along with a few other things I crafted up before heading to bed. In the morning, I went up to the hills to harvest some grapes, returned home and crafted up our wine. I did a modest amount of day drinking, which actually revitalized me greatly. I also wanted something for breakfast and found one of my favorites, toast with jam. Having a steady supply of blueberries, I made some blueberry jam along with harvesting our wheat to make some bread. I crafted up the bread, chucked it into the oven to make some toast, and finally combined it with our jam to make toast with jam. I was still full from the wine, so I didn't even get to enjoy it fresh. Next, I wanted to make something big, and that was a cheese pizza, another one of my favorites. The recipe called for tomato, cheese, and dough, all of which we had a big surplus of. So for the rest of day 93, I ran around and got all of the ingredients we needed and at the end of it all finally crafted up our seven cheese pizzas. Shit, I kind of want pizza for dinner now, hey? I checked the calendar which showed we were almost at the end of winter and enjoyed the scenes of my farm over the sunset and headed for bed. On day 94, it was time to start tying some loose ends beginning with the enchanting area. Right now, it just looks like sh**. So I crafted up some bookshelves and placed them in alongside some chiseled bookshelves. For the ceiling, I decided on adding some cross beams up here on the other side and in the middle as well. On the enchanting side, I realized we needed more bookshelves, so I crafted them up, noticed the pillages were now right outside my house, ignored the problem and finished off my enchanting area. At this point, I'd crafted up a bunch of lanterns and just decided on upgrading the lighting all throughout my house. I started adding some decoration sections into the enchanting area and then found myself at the barn. There was an enderman in there startling my animals, so I entered the ring and began the brawl. It was honestly pretty stupid of me because if he legit got one more hit off on me, I'd have failed the 100 day challenge at day 95. It was now snowing again, so I headed back inside with some new details to add to our enchanting area, and it was now looking awesome. I spent some time crafting up some more decorations and headed to the kitchen to add in our brand new cutting board and toaster. I also ended up making a fridge, which had an awesome little animation and also showed our items inside, which was just adorable. I also ended up replacing one of our furnaces with a sink, and now our kitchen was all done and looking incredible. Waking up on day 96, it was still winter. Checking the calendar showed it was the final day of winter, so I just continued decorating my interior, starting off with a couple of fancy paintings scattered around. I then decided my kitchen wasn't kitcheny enough, so I added in a checkered floor pattern with some stone bricks that completed the look. The final area that needed decorating was our smelting room, so I added heaps of various details up here along with some storage barrels above the furnaces, and I was finally happy with my interior. In preparation of the first day of spring, I headed back to the mines for the last time for another skeleton massacre. After a long day and night of murdering, I found myself waking up on day 97, the first day of spring. I crafted up a bunch of shovels in preparation of clearing all the snow and thankfully the snow was actually clearing up on its own which made the process a lot quicker. On top of this I also went around and bone milled as many crops as I could and replanted them. And after a day and a bit our farm was almost completely snow free and looking beautiful. There were still a lot of farms not completed so I used heaps of seeds to make bone meal and continued growing and expanding. I got the grape farm almost completed until another wandering trader spawned in and you know exactly what happened to him. I replaced my bedside table decorations with some books and a lantern along with extending my red carpet under the table in the bed for a more cozy feel, and then headed to bed. On day 99, I worked on building a little market stall for Emerald Muncher. I don't know why, because he didn't really deserve it. He still wanted one emerald for one bone meal, which was an outrageous price. And honestly, the rest of day 99 was pretty uneventful. I continued expanding farms as much as I could, along with tying loose ends, like adding lanterns to these spots of my farmhouse. I also felt the porch was a bit bare, so I first tried adding in some oak chairs, which didn't look too good, so I ended up just replacing them with some spruce ones. And, well, well, there we have it. The final sunset was upon us. I had a look over my farms, happy with everything I've gotten done, and headed to bed.
Alright, so with the challenge now completed, I thought I'd just take you guys through a quick tour of this entire world. And also, if you're interested, the world download will be available on my Patreon, so be sure to check that out if you want to, you know, explore this world for yourself. So as for my interior, we've got our enchanting area. I'm very happy with how this turned out. I actually completely forgot to add the ceiling on this side here. Um, we just, we won't talk about that. Downstairs, I love my little storage area. It's nice and compact and cute. We've got my bedroom, which looks awesome. The kitchen, I'm so happy with this, dude. And then upstairs, we have our big smelting room, which I think I probably could have done more with, but, um, you know, it's good enough. Heading outside, okay, so we've got my, yeah, my mine entrance with the subscribe sign above, uh, yeah, it's not the most amazing, I know. I didn't really have any room to add a, uh, you know, a different mine entrance in, so, you know, Oh well, it's good enough. Farmhouse exterior, probably my most favorite build of this entire video. I just think this turned out so nice. And then yeah, we just have, you know, everything else. We've got so many farms around the place. I love that I use kind of the natural landscape for all of these as well. It just makes it look so much more natural. My chicken coop, uh, I kind of wish I'd used a, uh, a trim for this, not just completely oak wood because it's kind of bland, but uh, you know, oh well. We've also got a lot of chickens as well, which is pretty cool. The silos, I am pretty happy with. Um, they definitely took the longest out of anything in this video and they didn't they didn't really turn out that great i think the roofs could have been a little bit better but i was just kind of worried that i wouldn't have enough time to finish everything else in this video so i just left them as they were towards the back area here we have our kale broccoli wheat and carrots i'm happy with all of these they look awesome although broccoli is like i don't know looks kind of weird to be honest but yeah also yeah i'm very unhappy with my beetroot and my potatoes i didn't get to finish them which kind of sucks as these only grow in like autumn or something so yeah it's going to be a while before it gets to that again the grapes and stuff we also yeah we didn't finish these entirely but we got them almost done which is okay and then the barn as well this is looking awesome i love this we didn't end up filling these two spots i was going to put chickens in one of these but i ended up just making the coop maybe we we're going to get pigs in here or something but i just didn't get around to it but that's okay maybe Maybe for maybe a 200 days video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. And then I think the final build here is the fish pond. Um, yeah, it turned out really awesome. I love this build. That's all I really have to say. So yeah, once again, if you want to download this world for yourself, be sure to check out my Patreon. I've also got all of the mods listed in the description as well, so be sure to check that out. All right, and well, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.